What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you are new to the channel, do me a favor, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. And with this video, we are jumping into Robin's issue number three. Now, if you haven't been keeping up with this line, go ahead, check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It is going to get you completely caught up on everything that has been going on with the Round Robins winner. And with us diving into this issue, we are running into the Junior Super Criminals. Individuals that were henchmen and workers for some of the biggest villains in Gotham City. As they all begin to transform into those criminals. Robin, Red Robin, Red Hood, Nightwing, and Spoiler are about to face against some of the greatest villains in Gotham history. Not only that, at the end of this issue, we find out a little bit more information on this mysterious female Robin, the one that appears to be behind everything that is currently going on. Be sure to buy the comic, support the industry, and with that being said, Oh, let's dive into this breakdown. All right, gang, so as we dive into this issue, we are getting some narration from Nightwing and Batman, with Nightwing currently giving a sit rep to Batman, letting him know what transpired at this cemetery. Now, at first, our Robins, they believed that they were just going against the junior super criminals. That is, until they mysteriously began to transform. And with this transformation, we start to see them become Penguin, Catwoman, Poison Ivy, and two Jokers. Having absolutely no idea what they are looking at. It wasn't until later that they found out that this is more like a, a hard light construct. Imagine hard light Halloween costumes. That is what they have done to themselves here. But the only thing that the Robins knew for 100% certainty is that there were hostages, ones that needed rescuing. And though these aren't necessarily the best of hostages, because these hostages are all villains. Villains that our Robins all went against in their first gauntlets. And the gauntlets, they were just tests. Testing out to see if each Robin was capable of living up to the mantle. Each of them going through their own individual gauntlet throughout the years. And so without wasting any time, they jump into the fight. But we quickly learn that these guys are no match for our Robins. Though they give some good punches, they give some good hits. The reality is, our Robins have been through this stuff a thousand times over, and these copycats are nothing in comparison to the real things. But as they are fighting these guys, they are learning that they know information that they probably shouldn't know. Information like throwing out one-liners. One-liners maybe Joker had said to Batman at some point in time, or Joker had said to Red Hood right before he killed him. You know, all of these things that they probably shouldn't know. The information you would only know if you were actually there. But this is when Nightwing, he really pieces it together and he figures out that they are wearing the information. Their suits are made out of every analysis that Batman has ever put into his system. Every one of the criminal skills, all of their strengths, all of their weaknesses. It is all the memories of who Batman villains are. Every memory Batman has ever had about these villains. And that same data is what prepped them to fight the children of Batman. Recognizing the only way to take these guys down is if they fight them without using anything Batman has ever taught them. Use anything else but that. And once they decide to do that, we see the tables shift in a drastic way. Any kind of fight that they were able to put up against our Robins, it is quickly dismantled. These guys are knocked down, thrown to the ground. And as all of them begin to run away, one of them stays behind. One of the super criminals stays behind and he tries to gather as much energy as he can. Injecting himself with, with whatever this substance is. It doesn't really specify what it is, but this is what helps them create this hard light costume. And with him taking this into his body, all of the others, they feel the power draining from them. And it's all absorbed into the one super criminal. Taking the powers of every single one of them, Damien walks up to him and in one single punch, takes down all of Batman's rogues. Now we know that's obviously not the case, but it's a good little fun joke. 
this guy pretending that he's going to be all of these villains. And Damien walks up and knocks him out in one single punch. And so, now with them all defeated, they have to try to rescue the hostages. The only issue is, inside of this place is a death trap. Because the juniors had lined this place with enough gas to knock out anybody. And if they stay in there long enough, they are going to end up dying. And so the Robins, they try with great effort to try to open this place up. Nightwing screaming out commands to all of the Robins, letting them know where they should go, how they're going to solve this, and what their best options are. But in the midst of this, our Red Robin, our Tim Drake, he lets it be known that he has no intention of saving them. You're talking about people that kidnapped his parents, poisoned them laughing as they died, his father losing complete use of his legs, his mother dying in agony as his father had to watch. One of them murdered children. Cartels have destroyed thousands of lives. And so he tells Nightwing, if we just don't save them and they die by asphyxiation, then we aren't murdering them. We just didn't save them. Now at this point, Damien, he firmly believes that Tim Drake is making fun of him. Like, great impression of me, haha, ha, real funny joke. But the others chime in and they let him know, like, this isn't actually a joke. I'm pretty sure that he is being serious. And Nightwing, he tries to settle down this conversation. But Tim Drake, he doesn't want to hear it. Because to him, this is growing up. This is what it means to grow up and recognize that not everyone needs saving. Now, obviously, everyone's like, you know, this isn't you. This isn't the Tim Drake that we know. But the truth of the matter is this is Tim Drake past his boiling point. And he is furious right now because everyone has gotten some kind of revenge. Red Hood was able to get his revenge. No one says a thing about it because he grew up on the streets because he was a crook for a while. Or Damien not even having someone in that room because his freaking gauntlet was Tim Drake. He'd almost killed him. But because he didn't, he passed Batman's test. And telling Tim Drake that day, Damien let him know that you would never be Robin because you are soft. But now looking at him today, that is simply not the case. And he lets all of the other Robins know that if you attempt to save them, I will stop you. And in that moment, Jason, he wastes no time going up to him and knocking Tim Drake straight on his butt. With Tim Drake knocked out on the ground, the rest of our heroes, they go to save the hostages. With the GCPD showing up and picking up all of the criminals, the junior super criminals, they were really just trying to prove themselves. Somehow being able to steal whatever information is on the back computer, whatever they were going to become, that is no longer going to happen. Because after everything they went through, every single one of them are now in a coma. The doctors at Gotham General, they don't even know where to start with this. But as it stands, the back computer, everything is back online. Everything is now protected. The biggest issue is all of our Robins, they have now gone their separate ways. Red Robin taking off during everything going on. And so with Batman getting this entire sit rep, he asks if there is anything else. And this is where Nightwing, he kind of loses it. He snaps on Batman, saying, what do you mean, is there anything else? I just told you that a bunch of your Robins, they are broken up right now. None of them are connecting. None of them want to talk to one another. And as it stands, Tim Drake is out there, and we have no clue where he is. These are your Robins. These are your children. And Batman, he had asked them, prior to him running off to the satellite, what they were doing, why all the Robins were meeting up and having this little group meeting. What they wanted to know, after everything that they had all been through, after everything that they had learned, if they thought being a partner to Batman was actually a worthy experiment, if being Robin was actually a good thing. But at that cemetery, Every single one of them Robins, they learned. They learned that being Robin, being his sidekick, it was never a good thing. And with him walking out of the room, Batman, he doesn't say anything. But once he leaves, Batman, he just puts his head in his hand because he knows he has failed and he doesn't know how to, how to approach this situation. 
He doesn't know how to approach all of his Robins and tell them of all the mistakes that he has made through the years and how he is sorry for them. And so picking up later on that evening, we see an individual robbing someone else in this alley. And with Tim Drake showing up on the scene, the guy pleads for some kind of help, only for Tim Drake to get out of here, jump up through a window, and getting into the building, getting into the warehouse, we find out that this is in fact not Tim Drake. Tim Drake has been tied up inside of this building, and this is the Robin, the one from the beginning, the one that says she was the first, that she went through Gauntlet Zero, but she failed. And now she plans on having her revenge by dividing and conquering the Robins with all of them scattered out now. There is nobody to come and save Red Robin. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. You know, I'm going to be completely honest. I'm still not sure how I feel about this line. Now, if this were Carrie Kelly, I might be able to say, you know what, okay, we're bringing Carrie Kelly back into the fold, that's super awesome, super cool, but the idea that, that Dick Grayson was not the first Robin, because even Carrie Kelly wasn't the first Robin, and after getting done with Robin and Batman, the line that we just finished up, and it lets us know that Dick Grayson is the one that came up with the name Robin, came up with the, the whole costume, everything. And so this story kind of backtracking on that and saying, you know what, no, there was another Robin. There was another attempt at Robin. This Robin failing the gauntlets where all the other ones passed. Now, I really do enjoy seeing all of our Robins together, seeing them all in one place. It's a lot of fun. It's very enjoyable. But the biggest issue I have is this female Robin because it really seems like the writers are saying that she was the first Robin, she just failed. And to take that away from Dick Grayson, I really just feel like it's a smack in the freaking face. Now, obviously, we're going to finish this line. It's only got three more issues. We're going to see where they go with this and really how this Robin fits into the, the grand scheme of things. I think one of the coolest things about this issue was that she was pretending to be Tim Drake this whole time. So we did see Tim Drake snap. She has all of this information. She knows exactly how the heroes will react. She knows exactly how they would talk to each other and how this situation would have unfolded. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you have not yet, do me a favor, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell. Make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. And until the next breakdown.